Howdy freeze dryers. I'm super excited about today's video because this is something that I've been putting together for at least a couple months and I've really been trying to keep a lid on this project uh, for this reason. I've been trying to put two freeze dryers and potentially three freeze dryers together to run on one pump. And you'll recognize this labeled pump. I did a video on this a couple months back, uh, just kind of reviewing it, giving a quick overview how it could benefit freeze dryers. And with the help of several people that I will talk about later in this video, I was able to put together these two freeze dryers running on this one single pump. You can actually uh, multiply this multiple times, probably up to five, maybe six freeze dryers of this size to run on this one pump. I'm gonna show you this setup. So today we're gonna put this through a test run. I'm gonna show you how you can set this up your own way at your own location. We're also gonna talk about why you would even need this. So first let's go over this setup it's a little crazy looking, a little scientific, a little laboratory looking, but let's go over this real quick. Our pump is a labeled Sogivac Neo D16. This is a very high quality pump. They're about $4,500, somewhere in that ballpark. But what we've done on top is made a valve that will go three different ways to three different freeze dryers. You can see I have two vacuum hoses going to each of the freeze dryers, and then also the option to do a third freeze dryer out this way if I wanted to. These are all individually uh, integrated, so you can shut each one of them off if you need to. That means you can run all three of them at the same time, or it just means you could run one if you wanted to. So this left side is just going straight into the freeze dryer like you would normally see. This right freeze dryer we had to modify so the vacuum hose would round this corner this is assuming that you're going to use the factory vacuum hoses you could make your own vacuum hoses as long as they're reinforced uh, hose like this and i use all stainless steel hydraulic fittings you could also do this in mpt brass if you wanted to it'd probably be a little bit cheaper maybe a little simpler to find the parts. And I wanna give credit where credit is due. This setup was actually created, as far as I know, by another YouTuber, Epicenter Brian. He had one that looked almost exactly like this. So I've spent the last couple months trying to replicate that setup. Uh, mine does differ, however, in one area, and that is the electronic. Because you have to make two freeze dryers or three freeze dryers or however many you're running kind of uh, talk to each other a little bit which requires a special setup. And that came from Patrick from a company called Frozen Right, and he created these cable coolers is what he calls them. This is an electrical box that will keep your wiring cool in your freeze dryer in each of the freeze dryers. It's designed specifically for a certain amount of freeze dryers, so let's look at this box. I have the two channel and the three channel, so one would run two freeze dryers, one would run three. These can also be linked together from what I understand to run even more than three, so you could run four or five if you wanted to by linking them together. Uh, let's see what's in the package. So very well made metal box. It's gonna give you a place to plug in the single pump, which is gonna be labeled in our case. This will go into the wall and then your two, since this is a two channel, each of the pump ports will go into the back of your freeze dryer and then go into the pump outlet on the back of the freeze dryer. Normally this plug would go out into the back of your pump. Instead, we're gonna use these two cords right here and go into the back of the cable cooler. So those two cords go in A and B. If you had a three channel, there would also be a C here. And then this end was gonna go into the back of the freeze dryer where we were just talking about. That's gonna go right here and that's gonna tell the pump when to turn on. So whichever of these freeze dryers demands the pump to turn on first, that will be the one that turns the pump on. And then also that goes for the last one that needs the pump. And since one will complete before the other, then you just turn the valve off on whichever one uh, doesn't need the pump anymore after the cycle is complete. Let's talk about these other ports. This one is for the wall circuit. You just supply your own extension cord because there are millions of different lengths that will be needed for extension cords, just depending on your setup. This is gonna go into just plug into the wall. This last outlet is to plug your pump into. We'll also be selling these at freeze drying supplies, the two channel and the three channel. So from here, you're just gonna turn your freeze dryers on like you normally would. Make sure your pump is turned on. I'm going to open the valves for the two freeze dryers that actually will need the vacuum. This one we can cut off because there's nothing hooked to it. So now both freeze dryers are on. This one is not gonna demand any vacuum. 
This one, I'm gonna turn the vacuum on. So we're just gonna go into the functional setting screen, turn the vacuum on. So if you watch as I turn the vacuum on, you'll see that red light come on. That's the cable cooler telling the pump to turn on. What's happening right now is it's vacuuming on both of these, even though this one doesn't need it. So there you can see the one on the left, vacuum is off, mTORs are going down. Right side, vacuum is on, mTORs are going down. So whichever freeze dryer needs the vacuum first will kick the pump on. Uh, even if you have two separate types of foods and uh, both are demanding a vacuum at a different time, still gonna turn the vacuum on. Let's talk about who in the heck needs this even. Why do you need two freeze dryers running on one pump? Why do you need three or four or five running on one pump? The people that are gonna benefit the most out of this are small businesses. Uh, people that are maybe small candy makers or even larger scale candy makers because you could run multiple XLs or larges or whatever on one pump. You're only having to maintain one pump. This pump only needs an oil change every three years. And small businesses, especially ones that are running multiples of the same kind of food, could really benefit from this because you're only using one pump and you're, you're basically getting done at the same time with all of the cycles. And now if you add the new Harvestrite Wi-Fi into the mix, you have a business that's a lot more hands-free all of a sudden. I think another scenario where this would be nice is if you have an older freeze dryer or a couple of older freeze dryers and maybe one newer one or something, you can run all of them, even if they have a bad pump or whatever, you can run all of those old freeze dryers just kind of piggybacking off of one good pump. With that said, you don't necessarily need this labeled pump, this exact same one, but you do need a very high quality pump. The, uh, the factory one that comes with the Harvestrite is not strong enough to do multiple freeze dryers. It's actually meant for one single freeze dryer. So make sure that you have a big enough pump or a good enough quality pump to run multiple freeze dryers uh, if, you're, if that's what your setup is gonna be. The last thing I wanna do is run a cycle uh, with two different types of foods in each freeze dryer. So you can see one turning on before the other and one turning off before the other. Freeze dryer one is getting all of these blueberries and I used the roller berry on those. You should check one of those out at freeze drying supplies. You can process a whole lot of blueberries or other kind of berries really fast. Also allows you to do the blueberries whole. Freeze dryer number two. Freeze dryer number two is getting all kinds of gnocchi. Sweet potato gnocchi, potato gnocchi, zucchini gnocchi. Both freeze dryers up and running. I'm gonna keep an eye on both of them very closely so you can see what happens when one needs the vacuum and one does not need the vacuum yet. And then we'll do the same for when one shuts off and one uh, stays on. So there it went. Vacuum pump turned on because this hit negative 10 Fahrenheit, so now it's in vacuum freezing. That turned the cable cooler on. I could close this one off if we wanted to uh, because this one is still at zero degrees. So you could either babysit this valve and you could actually turn it off right now and just wait until this got to negative 10 before this wants the vacuum on, or you can just leave them both open. Today I'm gonna leave both of them open because from my limited experience, I'm actually kind of learning at the same time you are. As soon as that vacuum pump turns on, this temperature is gonna drop very quickly anyway, so it's going to get to negative 10 very quickly and want that vacuum very soon. Just came down to check on the freeze dryers, give you a little update. This one is now in drying at 614 Militor. This one is in vacuum freezing, probably not for a whole lot longer. It's 666 Militor negative 18 degrees. Our left freeze dryer is done. So I'm gonna shut the vacuum off. Now all of the focus of the vacuum is going to this right side. This one we can release the vacuum. You'll notice the vacuum pump is obviously still running and the cable cooler is still on. And our Nokis are all done. All right, this last freeze dryer is done as well. You can see as soon as I hit done, the pump shuts off as well. This setup is obviously not for everyone. I do think it's important that we get this information out there so you can see it as an option if you ever need this as an option. I think this is a very viable option for certain people. I'll keep testing this uh, throughout time and give you some updates on some future videos. In the meantime, remember to live life simple and we'll catch you next week.